A lot of people have said to me, Mitch, you should make a video on how to build a consistent Pokemon deck. And you know what? That's a really good idea. Such a good idea, in fact, that that video already has been made. Just not on this channel. Jonathan from Super Carlin Brothers invited me onto his gaming channel, Super Carlin Gaming, to help him build a consistent 60 card list. And this is what we came up with. Welcome back everyone to more from the Sable Eyes. I'm Mitch and I'm starting straight on the PTCGO screen today because this is the list that Jonathan and I came up with over on his channel using my seven step process to deck building in Pokemon TCG. How about that for a <laughs> for an effective title? Uh, if you want to see exactly why all 60 of these cards are in the list, then head across to that video. There is a link down in the description. I'd recommend watching that one first because it explains every card in great detail. And whilst you're over there, make sure you subscribe to his channel, leave his video a like, and watch some of the other stuff he's doing. He's doing some fantastic Nuzlocke content at the moment. He's just started a new one, so you're just in time to jump on board with that. Hopefully you enjoy that and then you come back and watch mine, right? Don't leave me, don't leave me hanging. And whilst you're here, you can leave a like on this one as well, alright? Don't think I don't notice. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Eternatus VMAX out onto the ladder and play some games. If you don't know what it does, it's got a really, really strong attack. Dread End does 30 damage, times the amount of Dark Energy in play, and, f uh, not Dark Energy, Dark Pokemon. Good grief, Mitch. You should know what this card does. It's been one of the best cards in the game for a long time, and its ability, Eternal Zone, lets you have X extra dark Pokemon on the bench, which means you can deal upwards of 270 damage, which is incredibly good. If you want to know any of the other cards, it's obviously over on his video, Super Carlin Gaming. Go and watch that one. I'm going to take this bad boy out onto the ladder and see if we can't win some games with it. It's really, really good. So we're getting started here with the brand new Galarian Moltres V, a really, really powerful card that really gives Eternatus some extra, extra energy attachments, which is extra nice. Extra, extra. Alrighty, let's go. Great ball. Give me a basic Eternatus, please. That would be fantastic. We've found one. Uh, which means not only can we play down an Eternatus, we can also play down the Zigzagoon and the Weakness Guard energy now to get that first turn attachment, which even though we have energy acceleration with Moltres, is still really important for Eternatus. Now, we are up against a Victini V deck. Uh, which is one of those decks at the moment that is hovering around tier 1.5. It's not quite top tier yet, but it's definitely really, really powerful. And one of the things that this deck can do that really punishes decks like Eternatus is it can just target down Pokemon V. Victini VMAX has an attack for 2 energy that deals 220 damage to a Pokemon V, which is exactly enough to knock out almost all of them, so we have to be pretty careful. Moltres is not going to be a good attacker for us in this matchup. We're going to need to go with our Eternatus, so hopefully that all works out. Um, we've got another Great Ball off of the top deck here, which is fantastic. We can grab the Zigzagoon. Actually, do we need the Crobat? We might get the Cro No, we get the Zigzagoon. We've got the supporters in our hand. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we're going to evolve into the VMAX, and then we're going to play down the Zigzagoon. Uh, we are going to put 10 damage counters onto the benched Victini, and then play Professor's Research. I am anticipating knocking out this Victini this turn. We have to get a little bit lucky, but it's definitely, definitely doable. Let's Great Ball. We'll grab... Oh, another Zigzagoon. Many, many Zigzagoons. Uh, we will use that to ping the Victini on the bench. Then we can switch into our Eternatus. And then Crobat V. Um, and see what we find here. We've got a Pokemon communication that we can use for a Crobat next turn. But we're already... I think we're already there. 3, 6, 9, 12. Yeah, I think we're alright. We're going to take a knockout on this Victini. We've got perfect maths to deal the 180 damage required to knock it out. Um, and we've also got two prizes to take. Which is also really, really strong. So yeah, deck's working quite well at the moment. I've played a number of games with it, and it is super, super consistent. One of the big problems that I have found is Galarian Zapdos. You'll be thinking, Mitch, you're not playing anything to deal with Galarian Zapdos. Or maybe you're saying, well, Weakness Guard Energy should deal with it. But frankly, Galarian Zapdos discards an energy before dealing damage. So that's a bit of a problem. Plus, this Giratina is a bit of a pain too. We don't see a lot of that anymore though. Uh, so yeah, there there is a, a little bit of extra work to be done to this list, I think. Um, but that's, you know, 
that's the way that the deck building process goes. If you've gone through watching uh, on Super Carlin Gaming uh, and seen the process, then you'll know that it's not perfect. Like, it's not a perfect process. It doesn't work perfectly every single time. There are probably cards that we could cut from this list, but to be honest, at the moment, I'm feeling like the 60 that we have is incredibly good. Uh, I'm going to Pokecom away the Eternatus VMAX here, and I'm going to go and grab another Eternatus V, I think, because um, I'm realizing now my Eternatus in the active is about to get knocked out, and that is a problem. Uh, so we probably want to have another attacker soon. We can attach to the active, which is good. We can boss up the Victini V on the bench. I like doing that because it gives us an easy out next turn if we can find another boss. Um... But we have not been able to draw anything of note here. Let's just hit into the Victini, take two more prizes, and hopefully, hopefully, we can get ourselves going again. Um, my next, my plan next turn, obviously this VMAX is getting knocked out. That's happening. The Moltres can accelerate an energy. We have an energy in our hand. We can attach to the V. We can energy switch to the V, find a V max, and then we just need to deal as much damage as we possibly can. Um, and hopefully, like I said, hopefully we can find a boss and just knock out the Dudene on the bench. Um, but we'll wait and see. Okay, we need to discard some Pokemon. I'm going to get rid of these two Crobats because they are absolute liabilities for me. And then I'm going to throw the V max or the V into the active, I think. Alrighty, now what do we do? Top deck the VMAX. That's an incredibly strong start. Okay, so that's one piece of the puzzle now that we do not need to find. Uh, we can die flame wings with Moltres. This is a really cool ability. It's a really cool looking card as well. The alt art is just mm, mm, beautiful. Uh, and we've got energy switch as well. I'm going to get rid of uh, the swell with a quick ball. We'll grab a crowbat. I am going to use Pokemon Communication to shuffle the Crobat back in and grab another one, just so I can give myself more cards. I've only got one boss left in the deck to try and win this game, so hopefully we just draw into it, and we don't. Okay, so now we're going to have to just research, and we're going to just have to two-hit this Victini, and frankly, that is also fine, because, you know, we've got all of the things that we need. They cannot knock out the Eternatus VMAX this turn, unless something incredible happens that I am... 100% not prepared for. Uh, we've got another Eternatus on the bench. We've got an another Moltres if we need it. Uh, we can Dread End, deal 240 damage, and hopefully, hopefully, we are in a position to win this game next turn. Because like I said, the Victini VMAX cannot knock out the Eternatus. They can take two prizes on something on the bench. They might have a big attacker like a Reshizard or a, or a Heatran GX, but with Welder and Attachment, they can only deal 300 damage with Heatran, and a Reshizard can only deal 200. Uh, so it's... Unless there's like a Blacephalon in this deck that I'm not aware of, then I am 99% sure that we will go on to win this game, assuming, of course, that uh, everything, everything just continues on as it ought to. If you've watched my videos enough, you probably know that Marnie is probably probably a likely option, even though our opponent has already played a Welder. They'll like they'll reset stamp us for two or something, and we'll draw into no cards, and it'll just there's the reset stamp. I don't even know why. I bother. What is? Why, why do I say anything? It's fine. We've managed to top deck a quick ball, so we can grab a Crobat and hopefully get to 270 damage next turn. And it's just so predictable. Oh my word, God, I mm, I have no idea. I have no idea. So it looks like they're going to be attacking with Mewtwo here. They're going to get rid of the Swell with the Giant Hearth, and then you'd think they're going to be, yeah, they're going to be double blazing. So that's going to be the game for us. We win this one uh, because we just search out a basic Pokemon with this Quick Ball, and, uh, and that's going to be it. We can just grab a Zigzagoon. It doesn't really matter. As long as there's a basic Pokemon on the bench, we'll deal our 10 damage counters, and then we'll click Dread End for 270 damage, if you don't mind. An incredibly powerful attacker. You can see how consistently this deck does what it's supposed to do. Now, we've got another pretty good start here. We've got a Crobat, we've got a Terminus VMAX, we've got Energy. We really could be in a fantastic position. Plus, we're going second this time, which means that we're going to potentially be able to utilize the Power Accelerator attack, which will mean that we can accelerate extra energy into play, which is always a good thing. Now, I don't quite know what 
our friend Nike is God is playing. Um, at the moment, it could be anything Dragapult. Okay, so this this should be a walk in the park for us. Dragapult is weak to dark. So there is no excuse for losing this matchup. If I lose this one, then I will delete my channel. Probably shouldn't have said anything as silly as that. But that's okay. We're going to grab a Moltres. We are going to switch just to get us an extra card to draw. We're going to throw down the Weakness Guard and then Crobat for five. Uh, this leaves the, um, the Darkness Energy in our hand, which is always good. Um, I'm going to grab... Actually, let's grab the Eveltal here. Eveltal's a really good attacker against Dragapult. And uh, I really like getting the Eternatus as well. So let's Power Accelerator. The question is, do we even attach the energy? Like, we've got it in our hand. Do we attach it? I don't think we do. Since we found the VMAX and we don't have any draw support in our hand, I think we just hold on to the energy, because then we can evolve into the VMAX next turn, attach the energy, play down the Eveltal, play down the Lipart if we have to, and then boss the Dragapult and knock that out. I think that's going to be the play. But, as we know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. They could money us. They could re They could crushing hammer us. <sighs> that was close. Have to will those tails. You just really have to will them. There's the money. Okay, well, I'm just... <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just uh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just going to wiggle around and just, it's just going to... It's going to be fine. Okay, so we've got double Eternatus, Zigzagoon, plus Quick Ball, and a Weakness Guard Energy. And you know what? I think I'm just going to play all of these cards. Let's just play the Eternatus into the active. Uh, we will play the Eternatus onto the bench. We will play the Quick Ball. We'll get rid of the Weakness Guard Energy because we do not need that. We'll grab the Crobat. We'll play down the Zigzagoon. Um, and then we will play down the Crobat. Actually, let's see. Can I get a knockout on the Zigzagoon in the active with four Zigzagoons here? Do you reckon that's even remotely possible? Not quite. It's close. It's going to be close. I'm going to go for it. Let's try. Let's try. Let's, let's just see. So we're... How many? Two more away. We've got two bench slots. And we're actually putting a Dark Energy into it. And there's one, maybe? One. Oh, the Zigzagoon was very close to being knocked out. Was very close to being knocked out by Zigzagoon Ticks. Let's uh, let's use Pokemon Communication anyway. Uh, and I'm going to grab the Eveltal because I, I want that. I'm going to put it on the bench this time. Uh, then we're going to Dread End. We'll deal 240 damage to this Zigzagoon with 20 health left. Uh, and take our first prize of the game. Now, this this matchup, even though it should be relatively easy for us to win, will show the uh, the skill, not the skill, but the quality of a card like Lipard in this deck. Now, Dragapult struggles because it has to manually attach energy, or at least it used to before Shadow Rider Calyrex came out. Uh, and this list, to counteract the fact that we need to attach extra energy, is playing the EXP share item, which lets energy cards that are attached to Pokemon that are knocked out return to the bench. But Lipard will stop that from happening because we will remove one of those EXP shares and then knock out the active, hopefully, next turn. And that ought to give us enough momentum to just absolutely steamroll over our opponent, which is incredibly good. Uh, they're going to max Phantom here now. We've got everything that we need to give ourselves a chance at pulling that play off. We've got energy in our hands, so the Crushing Hammer isn't that big of a deal. Um, even if we didn't have the energy, we still have the Moltres on the bench, which is a very strong... Uh, a very strong countermeasure. Uh, we will use the Dire Flame Wings ability just to make sure that we've got the energy. Uh, we need to find a, a Lipard. There's the Lipard. I was about to say any Pokemon will do because we've got a Com in our hand. Let's play the Lipard down. I will remove the benched EXP share. And then we're just going to knock out our opponent's VMAX. We, we just dealt 400, uh, 540 damage, which is just an obnoxious amount of damage to deal. We're taking three prizes. Our opponent has no energy on the bench, no acceleration, and they've conceded. So, it's a big win. Now, you know what? We've had a relatively short intro today, so I am going to play one more game for you. We're going to grab our Eternatus out with the Quick Ball, uh, and then we can, like, do a bunch of stuff. Let's just Crobat for a couple of cards. It's something that's a bit of a luxury in this deck. We can... We can use Crobat early because we have so many of them. Um, I'm not entirely sure exactly what we're playing up against here. Our opponent has a Crobat in the active, which is a good card, but it's not a good card to have in the active at the start of the game. 
And one of the things that we are going to struggle with here is the fact that we have whiffed an attachment in the early game, which is pretty rough, and we're playing against ADP. Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia, which is an incredibly powerful attacker. It's actually free on the ladder now, if you're not sure. If you want to play ADP, it is, it is literally free. All you need to do is get through the first two uh, rungs of the ladder, and you'll get yourself two of the best tank team card ever printed. Uh, which is pretty impressive. They're throwing down the Morwile. They won't find anything in our hand. Morwile, a pretty good card to play against the Turnonus, because usually they are holding onto Crobats and things. But yeah, we want to deal as much damage as we can to this ADP. Hopefully they don't get their GX attack off. If they do, that's okay. We can still knock them out. Uh, it's just going to be slightly more difficult, because they usually play things like Big Charm, and we need to get a Zigzagoon Ping, and all this kind of stuff. It does make it a little bit awkward. Here's the Metal Saucer. Do they have the Energy Switch and the Regular Switch as well? If they do, that would be incredibly impressive. And it will make my life very difficult. Because I'll have a lot to do and only a short amount of time to do it. So we will wait and see. There is a Switch. So they're switching into something. Into the Jirachi. Alrighty. So, obviously not every piece in their hand, but they're pretty... They must be pretty close if they're going for a Jirachi here. And this is the thing with ADP, right? They've used Crobat to draw cards. They can still Quick Ball for the Dene. I can't remember whether they've used a Supporter or not. I think they have. I think they used Research. But, I don't know. These, these decks just draw so many cards, and I think we're about to see some more cards drawn here, which is just... It's frankly just incredible how quickly ADP can go. Um, they've got an air balloon on a crowbat now, so they have a switch out. If they can scoop this Jirachi up, they can get it out of the active. And potentially use it again, which would be very, very powerful. It's just a matter of what our friend Tra... Trouchman... Trouchman13 decides to do. He's going for the Dedene, getting rid of the Mewtwo and Mew. He has a switch in hand, so we can go into the Crobat if he wants. He's actually going straight into the ADP. He's going, I am getting this energy switch. It is happening off of this ADP. He's absolutely committed. He's got a Zacian. Does he have the energy switch? No, he does not. Okay, so we're being given a small amount of time here, which is fantastic. If we can get a knockout on this ADP this turn, we will pretty much wrap this game up in the first turn of our attacks, which is fantastic. And even though we haven't attached any energy, I'm still relatively confident that we can do it. Uh, so a handful of stuff here. Let's Great Ball. Uh, we'll see what Pokemon the uh, gods decide to give us. Zigzagoon is an incredibly good one. Let's Pokecom again. Uh, we will grab another Eternatus. I like that. We'll play that down. We will use the Zigzagoon and we'll put 10 damage onto the active ADP, which leaves it with 270 HP left. Uh, a very good number to have. We'll grab another Zigzagoon here. It's a bit of a shame we don't have the Lipart. I would have liked to have grabbed that just to get rid of that free retreat from our opponent's Crobat. But that's okay. We'll just put 10 damage onto this more while. Then I'm going to Crobat and hopefully we can get an energy. And we do. Okay. So. This is. This is it. We're going to grab this Crobat. We're going to use the Weakness Guard Energy. We're going to use Die Flame Wings. We're going to use our Energy Switch to get an Energy from the Moltres onto the Eternatus. Then we're going to use Pokemon Communication because we need one more Pokemon on the bench. I'm going to come away the VMAX. Our opponent's saying, well played. They know that this game is over. We're going to throw down the Zigzagoon. We're going to ping something else on the bench. It doesn't really matter. We'll retreat into the VMAX and deal 270 damage. Three, three prizes on our first turn attacking. We had no energy in play, and our opponent just concedes. What an incredibly good deck. So I think we've put together a pretty strong Eternatus deck list, but overall, how good is this thing? I mean, we saw it. It's pretty gosh darn good. This is the first deck that I'm giving an S tier 
to play ability for. This is one of, if not the best deck in the game at the moment. It is so playable that you will see the top players playing it all the time. And the best part about it is, it is super good against the other decks that are really, really strong in the current standard format. Uh, if you want to know what those decks are, by the way, then uh, subscribe to the channel because tomorrow, I'll give you the give you the hot tip, there's the top five decks from Chilling Rain. It's coming to you tomorrow, so be prepared for that. Consistency-wise, S tier, again, it is so easy to set up. It is not hard to get your Eternatus attacking. Uh, Value-wise, I've given it a B. Moltres is brand new, so it's relatively expensive. I think it's about five packs on uh, on the trades on PTCGO at the moment, which is it's a little bit on the on the rich side. It's not super expensive, but it's not easy to get a hold of. And Eternatus is actually really cheap. You can get them for one or two packs at the moment. So I'm giving this one a B for value. It's very, very close to an A, but it's definitely an A for fun. This is our first A-plus deck. The first deck that I would say that if you play this, you could realistically win a four 500 player tournament. It's incredibly strong. Like, I mean, what else is there to say about it? So there you have it. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming along. I appreciate you all attending. If you're brand new and you've made it this far, then leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you to all of my regular viewers who are consistently viewing. Until the end, I appreciate the 33% of you that do it. And that's a pretty good statistic. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks especially to all of my members. But uh, today, there's only one channel member that I'm going to be calling out, and that is Super Carlin Gaming. I've circled them in yellow. Thank you very much for inviting me onto your channel to produce this deck list. It's incredibly good, incredibly fun. And if you look back, Super Cullen Gaming has been a member of this channel for a long, long time. So very, very, very much appreciate the support and hopefully... Uh, hopefully all goes all goes well in the Soul Silver Challenge. Uh, that is it's looking pretty exciting. I want to know what comes out of that egg. The day that I'm the day that I'm recording it, there was a there was a cliffhanger, so I want to know. Anyway, this is personal now. It's starting to turn into a conversation. I don't want that to happen. We're gonna leave it there. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching, and I will see you next time for more from the Sable Eyes. Bye.